attendant of police during a clash between police and Okada riders. Former chairman of Independence National Electoral Commission at Tahiru Jega gets set to unveil new political movement on October 1st. We'll be discussing how much of an opposition movement that can be. And also the Nigerian Indigenous uh, uh, Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, NINAS, gets set for its rally at the United Nations. Good morning and welcome to a Friday morning here on PLOS TV Africa. It is The Breakfast and I am Usao Gi. And I am Annette Felix welcoming you to the last edition of The Breakfast for this week um, in September. Good morning to you, Sarge. Our first top trending story really brings sad memories of a history of clashes between the police, tax force, basically law enforcement agencies in Nigeria versus the people. And I say the people because whether it's Nigerians who are walking on the streets with dread, dreadlocks, whether it's Nigerians who are driving in flashy cars, using iPhones, or just a bike man, an Okada rider trying to earn a living, there always seems to be a clash between law enforcement agencies and the people. Whereas what we see in other crimes is, you know, synergy, basically. The people calling on the police for rescue, for help. The police trying to make sure that, you know, everything is working for them. I mean, I have friends who live in other parts of the country who said they lost their purse on the train and the police basically came to knock on their door and gave it to them. So we've had, you know, clashes like this. And one of that is one of our top trending stories this morning, a clash between um, members of the Lagos State um, Tax Force and Okada riders in the Ajao area of Lagos State. Now, the story says that these law enforcement agencies had gone to that place to basically seize motorcycles. This is something I have seen firsthand, especially along the Ikeja axis of Lagos. You know, you see them, they bring this big van and they just begin to impound motorcycles. But we must remember that the Lagos state government as a whole has actually banned um, the use of motorcycles, but it still is in use because obviously the means of transportation and all of that still you know, comes into play. So they came to you know, basically um, seize these motorcycles and these people who felt they've had it up to their necks revolted, they protested and it became violent. We heard that lots of police officers were injured and reports say, it's unverified at the moment, but reports say one police officer has been killed and they basically say that he was a former DPO in charge of Ajangbadi station. Um, they also say that this policeman who was killed um, was CSP Kazim Abonde, that he was the one who had led the operation and that he was in charge of a B Ops Lagos command before his death. I mean, we have a video of that situation, a passerby um, who just brought out his phone recording what has happened we saw the police vehicle badly badly damaged vandalized by these people you know who had built up anger um, because of what the police had been doing and you know of course the ban on motorcycle riding by the Lagos state government um well um so rest in peace to the chief superintendent of police um there's so much you know to unpack here but i think it's really just another example of nigeria can happen to you at any time mm -hmm. regardless of who you are nigeria can happen to you and um and that is with the and i'm saying that we, with regards to the dysfunctional society that we currently live in and exist in and we see as normal um that includes those people who argue that oh you know nigeria is a much better place to live in than living in canada and uk and all of that because well there's some level of lawlessness here that people get away with and you know and we're comfortable in this level of dysfunction um you know but it's just an example of how nigeria can happen to you you know either you're waking up in the morning telling your wife goodbye as a um, chief superintendent of police and um you know she's expecting you back later in the evening after a long day at work of police in lagos state and eventually you get killed by okada riders um, or you're driving, you know, on your way to work or business here in Lagos and a truck, you know, container falls on your vehicle and, um, you know, you, you know, family members are lost and, and some of all of that. Um, so it's just a perfect example of how Nigeria can happen to anybody at any time. If we don't fix, you know, the challenges with our society from the Okada riders to the policing system mm -hmm. to the way that we enforce laws, um, yes. you know, um, laws here. Because, yes, you mentioned the Lagos State government has 
you know, of course, banned or kind of riding on major roads. You can still see them on, you know, minor, you know, um, um, streets here and there. But on major roads, I think they've been banned. And so um, there's that law. But at the same time, it's the enforcement that is a challenge. And yeah. the fact that there's really no better, you know, ways to enforce these. There's a lot, you know, better ways to enforce these things. But we never get to use those, you know, means. We instead... Um, we get, send police officers out there. Some of them, you know, walk undercover on um, um, bikes also, and then True. corner some of those bikes. And you know, they I've seen, I've seen this so many times. Jump out and I, pull I, them I, out I, of the I've bike. I've entered a bike once, oh, sorry, okay. I entered a bike once in Lagos, and guess what? I eventually found that this was a police officer because you know he he was wearing his uniform, then a mufti on it, and I want to believe that you know, thinking as a police officer, I would have assumed that oh, you're trying to help a citizen. Not any entitlement, anything, but you won't believe that this man charged me and even much more than I would usually take. I usually pay for a bike, you know, from, what, from point A to point B. So even these police guys who go and seize motorcycles, you have bikes that they use for personal business. Yeah, so yeah. so you really, know, I mean, you can see the hypocrisy there. So, so with that, you know, as long as he's doing it within what the Lagos State Government has, you know, created, you can, you can be a police officer and be an Okada rider. There are people who have two jobs. You can be, <laughs> you know, work in an office and then on your way home, you know, uh, do a really? uh, Uber, you know, yes, and, you know, be a part of the car hailing services. Really? So, and, 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 yeah, so you have absolutely. your own bikes and you go out and seize other people's bikes. Well, I don't know if that particular person that carried you seize other people's bikes. He was not on a major um, road, sweetheart. Yeah, the same but, but let's, take, so, a, let's so take a look at this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what, my point video. really is that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know hit on or or um, uh, push aside that man mm -hmm. for carrying on his bike. If he decides that after his police work in the afternoon <laughs> he wants to be an Okada rider in the evening, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so there is that. Oh, you know, but it's really just. I no, want to link the, that into the, cases the, of the point listen, is oh, the point is the point I'm trying okay. to make is. Nigeria and the dysfunction that we live in can okay. you know, definitely affect you any day. These Okada riders, yes, maybe you, we might argue have had it up to mm -hmm. here because they've continuously been oppressed by these same police officers and by the Lagos State Tax Force. Even those who are selling corn at the roadside, the ones outside the office here, you see them every now and then trying to you know, carry their corn and run into a, um, you know, a corner yes. so that they don't, so those things aren't seized. The enforcement is, you know, has always been a challenge because a lot of people say it as unfair simply because there's no other options. Um, nobody needed to die yesterday at all for any reason whatsoever, either on the Okada rider side or on the police side. Nobody needed to die, and unfortunately, at Jao Estate now is going to be a very, very tense, you know, area because, of course, you expect the Nigerian police officers to want to revenge, mm -hmm. and you know, like every that. other person might be, become a victim. Something like this. that, and and just to. to to really buttress on the points of the hypocritical nature of our law enforcement. You see, just like what you mentioned, you see people who sell food and con, you know, snacks basically by the roadside. And you see these law enforcement agencies, the tax force, they come and seize their stuff. But guess what? You still see those people on their break time go to patronize those people when they want to eat. They, they do not have enough salaries to afford going to the high-end restaurants. They actually go to those roadsides and buy food from them. When their break time is over, they come back and they basically impound the, their, their goods. So really, does that make sense? Well, let's take a look at the video that we're talking about at Jao Estate yesterday. Um, uh, I beg, oh, if you're around, they come at Jao, I beg, no pass at Jao this night, I think God beg now. They don't keep police for inside the uh, Ajao, almost in the van. Oh. Tax force, tax force versus Okada people. I'm looking for that Pantami picture. Van. You don't know, see? See what did they do police van for inside Ajao estate. Oh. Oh, my, and I heard they killed the policeman. I heard they killed the policeman. That's, uh, of course, um you know, um, a video that was made at the uh, scene of the incident yesterday at Ajao Estate. So once again, rest in peace to that chief superintendent of police. And we hope that, um, you know, some of these things somehow, some way are better enforced. And, you know, there's really no need for violence. And mm -hmm. A lot of people also bring, you know, the fact that a lot of these Okada riders aren't, if some of, many of them aren't even Nigerians, by the way. Mm. So our next top trending story is this. We have found disparities in the offer letter and the acceptance letter that was exchanged between uh, Minister of Communications and Digital, um, Digital Economy, um, Dr. Issa Pantami, and the Federal University of Technology, Oweri, in Imo State. Now, these letters were exchanged back and forth, and when we took a closer look, we found 
um, this, you know, inconsistencies in the dates that the letter was, you know, given and received. Now, in the offer letter, um, which will come on your screen in a few seconds, it was dated August 20th. Now, but Pantami acceptance letter was dated March 30th, and that's five months earlier um, from the dates that he received a formal a formal offer from the university to take up a professorship role, uh, you know, in the Department of Cybersecurity at FUTU. Now, when we take a closer look again, we still see that that notice of the offer letter that, you know, was dated August 5th, said that Pantami had to resume with effects from March. So we can see that back date again. So Nigerians really have been thinking about a lot of things. They've been speculating that the offer letter was possibly made verbally and Pantami accepted that in writing, or that someone maybe inside or outside the university connived with, with Isa Pantami to you know, put up this um, professorship thing um, and that the registrar needed to sign later on to just validate everything that they've done. But it really is interesting to note that a minister who just came out of a scandal regarding his links with terrors, terrorism and you know, being a terrorist sympathizer, all of that, you know, is getting into another one regarding a supposed professorship of cybersecurity at the Federal University of Technology um, we were in Imo State. So even when you look at the letter um, of acceptance, Pantami called it Oweri State, not even Imo State. You know, he went on to say that um, he had the permission of President Muhammad Buhari to go ahead and accept this role and that he would also continue to teach cybersecurity um, in the university um, without receiving any payments. That is going to be as part of his, you know, civic responsibility, you know, it's just, it just seems like a mess right now. Uh, I don't know what Pantami has gotten involved in, but we can't wait to see how he gets out. Um, so the offer letter, you know, states that he's going to be paid about five million plus annually. Yes. Um, so I don't know what he's talking about when he says <laughs> that um, he's going to be doing it pro for bono free. Uh, for free, which is, you know, doesn't make any, doesn't add up in any way. Um, and of course, I'm not sure if you can be a minister and earn as a minister and of, at the same time earn salary from a university in Futo. Yes, the dates and the disparity with the dates has already been pointed out, which also makes absolutely no sense. Um, you know, and it looks more like, a, you know, somebody tried to cover a face, you mm. know, and a knee-jerk reaction quickly went to go and uh, write a letter, you know, to cover up for the controversy that this had brought up, you know, a few weeks ago. Mm. Um, you know, I would also quickly mention that personally, I feel like of all the, you know, challenges in Nigeria today, you know, if you talk, write the, the one, next 100 challenges that Nigeria currently has, I don't think this should even make the list. Um, you know, this is just, for me, you know, another distraction from what Nigeria currently should be um, focused on. You know, if he decides to be a professor, decides to be, to work in the um, a kitchen department in photo, decides to work in security department, whatever department he chooses to work, that's his personal problem or personal business. Um, the law would be able to determine whether he will be able to receive salary both as, as minister and as professor. There's still, of course, a controversy whether he really can be dashed professorship. Uh, because you have to be an associate professor, you have to earn it. You, mm. you do not wake up one morning and somebody likes your face and decides. The school oh, said they waived some rights. Do you remember the statement the school it does, made it does, that they waived some rights to that. make pantomime yeah. professors? So. You, but I don't think you can just do that. You know, you can't just wake any day and decide to dash somebody a professorship. <laughs> There's people who try to cover this up and say, oh, that he was an associate professor, failing to recognize that in earlier um, letters and, you know, um, um, online um, um, public um, details earlier that Patami himself had put out, he was assistant professor in um, um, Medina University, I believe. Um, you know, so all, these are only just people trying to cover up here and there. Uh, but still failing at it, you know, and I don't know how you are, as a university can fail so woefully at trying to cover up these little details here and there that, you know, uh, that um, people have pointed out. Mm. Um, but once again, it's really not any of the biggest challenges. What I also will point out here is how people um, have forgotten that President Mohamed Ebarra was appointed or was elected president to be president for Nigeria and Nigerians to lead, to, you know, be the leader of the country, to direct and steer the ship of Nigeria. He is not in any way anybody's spiritual or educational father that, you know, would, that people can no quickly mentor. lean to and say, yeah, except mentor and say, oh, you know, he asked me to go ahead and take it. Futo could have given the same person who actually go ahead a professorship. They didn't. So, you know, I, I, the president has made these things happen. He has... I keep talking about body language. He has made some of all these things continue to happen, and that's why we cannot have a, a better functioning society. We can't have systems that work. 
Because people would quickly lean on to and, and say, oh, my spiritual father or my, my political godfather told me to go ahead and take it. And so, so it's not a problem. When we should be always and always pushing for the right things to be done. The president should never let him, his name to be used for these type of things. He, as a president who really believes in standing for the right thing, you shouldn't let anybody use your name as an excuse for the wrong things. But the president has made these things continue to happen. And that's why when some of these, when these incidents in Nigeria, a lot of people already just know how it, it will end. A lot of people already knew that um, Abakari was not going to be extradited. A lot of people knew how Pantami's issue was going to end. Initially, when there was controversy over his um, statements towards uh, uh, terror and all of, all of that. Um, but that is really how the president has positioned himself and, you know, the way that he has made Nigeria currently uh, to run, which is very, 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 uh, very sad. Mm. Um, so those are the points that I, I, would, I would make concern in this. You know, him saying that President Muhammad Buhari asked him to go ahead and take it, it's, it's very, very sad. Mm. Um, and also, you know, whoever it is that is in photo that is, you know, feels like they need to honor, you know, um, Pantami. Okay, but once again, this is really not any of Nigeria's problems currently. Mm -hmm. We have too many issues to be dealing with, um, to be bothered or concerned with, con you know, that uh, Pantami's professorship is not even top 100. Our next top trending story this morning, hmm, it's a video that has gone viral online and it's become a major talking point because it shows, you know, officers, naval officers, you know, writing an examination. And basically, why this is such an issue is the way they were so widely spaced on that field. So basically, people have been joking about this, saying, you know, this space is just worse than social distancing. This is the definition of on your own. You know, if you're not an intelligence, don't come into the Navy. So it's just really interesting to see how much, how, how far, you know, they have gone to make sure that people, there's basically some form of integrity um, in this examination. Let's take a listen um, to what that eyewitness is saying there. Examination, as you can see, the spacing, very proper. These are the ones that are writing capex. My brother, if you are in the Navy, you need to be intelligent. You need to be very intelligent. That's why I see, I'm telling you, this my postmates are very ready. We are very ready in the Navy. We are very ready. If, if you want to come to the Navy, please be very intelligent. Examination, as you can see, the spacing, very proper. Uh, yes, um, well, I, I, I don't know if, you know, that is the normal way that the Navy always, you know, carries out their examinations. Um, but, you know, maybe that's a facility that they have. You, you'd expect it, it would be, a, you know, an examination in a, a, hall. a hall or something. But, you know, if that's what they have, you know, because of the spacing that they need, that's fine. <laughs> but I think it's a good thing, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, of the importance of having the best foot forward every time. Um, and understanding the... the um, importance once again of having uh, people who really know their onions get to that you know level um, and not just having any random person um, you know through examination malpractice or any other means pass those examinations and become you know a, a, a burden in the Nigerian Navy so it's it's one of the most pristine I mm. believe um, the security agencies Nigeria has mm -hmm. and so yes if you're not smart enough then go home go okay. join the police I totally agree with everything you said but my own question really and this is something that has been on my mind for a while is what sort of questions are they being asked are they being asked questions of like the 1999 history or things that are relevant when it comes to tackling security in today's society in the 21st century. I ask this because I've done exams, both you know, for local exams and exams for you know, schools abroad and all of that, you know, courses. And when I compare this, the quality of questions, I get questions asked about like what's happening now. You know, you need to write essays about the, you know, basically the relevance of certain issues that are going on now, contemporary issues. But when you have to write exams, you know, in, for example, University of Lagos, they'll ask you questions like, when was NTA founded? And I'm like, how does this move me forward? How does the year that NTA was founded help me be a better journalist? So the quality of the questions really is something that we need to, we need, I'm not saying it's, you, need, you don't need to know current affairs, it's important. But I'm saying that 
the quality of the questions, are they, are they contemporary? Are they things that put you up to date? Are they things that actually test for your knowledge of today's world and security as that case is? That's just really, is my own cup of tea. What is the quality well, of the questions that have been asked? Well I, well, I don't think we know much about what, you know, Navy examinations are like or, you know, what their, you know, what their syllabus is, you know, what it contains. Um, I think what you're referring to is, you know, an improvement on the syllabus for teaching Nigerian students, you know, from the 80s to the 90s and until where we currently are. There's a lot of schools still who still have the same uh, marking scheme or the same syllabus that they've been using since the school started in 1990 um, in Nigeria, which hasn't been improved on. Um, science has improved, art has improved, you know, technology has improved, mathematics, I believe, has also improved. So there's many of all these things that should have, the syllabus should have been improving with the time that hasn't changed. But we don't, with the current, you know, that video we showed, we don't, we have no idea what the Navy questioning is like or what the examinations are like. Um, you know, my, my point once again is that what, what, whatever it is, even if they're asking you the number of grains of rice in a bag, um, the most important thing is that, you know, for you to be able to make it to that to the next stage in every level of being a navy officer you must be the best and you should be able to the best um, in knowing how many grains of rice are in your bag yes you know <laughs> the number of grains of beans Sorry, you know, right. how, how many days it took for this <laughs> yam tuba to be big like this you know random oh, um, those type of questions but you have terrible, to you terrible. have to they have to always put their best foot forward and their best students every single time nobody who you know <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right that's where we draw the curtains on top trending this morning let's improve on our school curriculum and the quality of the questioning we ask our students shouldn't we let's take a break here and we'll be back for off the press